Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our Vice President and General Manager, Mr. John Hildebrandt. Thank you, Brian, very much. So welcome to Cedar Point. We're glad to have you here, all of you. One of the uh, common expressions uh, among the full-time staff is, uh, who's in charge of weather today? <laughs> On good days, of course, everybody is in charge. On bad days, you can't find anyone. Mm -hmm. Not sure who's in charge today. But somebody has to take the blame for the Northwest wind, I know. Sailors have a, a name uh, on the Great Lakes for the Northwest wind. Uh, they call it the witch. I'd say the witch was on her broomstick today. <laughs> but we're glad you're here. Those of us who, who love the park, love it on just about uh, any kind of day, see your point in the off season, particularly in the, in the depths of winter like today, has its own special beauty. I'm glad you had an opportunity to see it. How many of you saw any eagles today? Any eagles out there today? Cedar Point is a, a famous wintertime hangout for bald eagles. Really? Typically we see two or three a day uh, in various parts of the peninsula. Uh, a couple of weeks ago out at Lighthouse Point, out by the pier that goes out into Sandusky Bay, there's a big tree there. We counted eight eagles. That oh, wow. Right about 11.30, 12 noon. <clears throat> Four or five were fully mature, white-headed eagles, uh, and two or three immature. But pretty exciting. So it's pretty quiet on the outside, but inside there's a lot going on. Uh, we had ride mechanics working today, getting our rides ready for 2012. Uh, we call it winter rebuild. And it's a huge task. Uh, I don't think perhaps a little understood or, or appreciated by the average guest, but that's okay. That, we're supposed to worry about that. They're just supposed to have fun. But every, every year, really, every off-season, it's a race to get coaster trains off the ride, stripped, inspected, parts replaced, put everything back together again, and get back out on the rides and, and tested and ready for opening day. Uh, not an easy task at all. I know all of you are fans of Cedar Point. You have affection for this place, and uh, it is a place that is unique in all the world. I know, I know all of you spend a lot of time here. Many of you I know, I've known for years, and uh, many of our faces I recognize just from walking on the midway. A little about me, uh, I've been here a long time. I worked one summer as a ride operator on the Frontier Lift and, uh, way back in 1969. I became full-time in 1974, and except for one year at Dorney Park, our, our park in Allentown, I've been here ever since. So if I have the math right, I think it's 37 seasons at Cedar Point, and and 38 in the industry. I was born in Cleveland, 1949, on the west side. Grew up there, went to St. Edward High School. After college, graduate school, and a brief stint in the U.S. Army, I needed a job. I was living at home, and my father, who was very old school, thought I should be living somewhere else. <laughs> so I answered an ad in the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Senior Point was looking for a staff writer. I had been an English major in college, and if there was anything I knew that I could do, it was right. Besides, I had worked seasonally at Cedar Point. Uh, this was the entertainment business, roller coasters, you know, what's not the one? It sounded like fun. So I applied. By some minor miracle, I got hired. I do remember my starting salary was $165 per week, which is, works out to $8,500 per year, and I really thought I had it made. And I did, as it turned out. I've had a wonderful career here at Cedar Point. I did have a kind of family connection to the park. Uh, one of my brothers worked as a bellman at Hotel Breakers for two years. Another was a captain on the Western Cruise. Another worked in games. Uh, my sister worked at a food stand on the beach for a season. There was a picture up in my office of my father, my uncle, and my aunt taken in 1942 on the Cedar Point Midway. My mother took the picture. My father is in his army uniform. And I can locate the picture pretty well because in the background, you can locate a C and a Y. That's the C and the Y of Cyclone on the front of the loading station for the Cyclone roller coaster, which was located about where disaster transport and space spiral are today. 
I met my wife at Cedar Point. She worked for the Sandusky Register as a news reporter. I met her the first summer I worked at the park and we were married just before the start of the 1975 season. She had never worked at Cedar Point. She grew up on Long Island, uh, just outside New York City. But in 2005, uh, she started work at Cedar Point as a makeup artist during mm -hmm. Yellow Weekends. And she's been working uh, every Yellow Weekend since and loves it. I love the history and tradition of Cedar Point, and I'm sure most of you do as well. The history is all around you at Cedar Point, and if you let it, it can really get uh, almost intoxicating, really. Walking around the park, I can imagine what it must have been like to ride Leap the Dips, or the Cyclone, or picture Newt Rockney as a lifeguard uh, brewing back to throw his, his fellow teammate and lifeguard to Custoray a pass on the Cedar Point Beach, which happened about 100 yards where we are right at this moment. My office is in the Coliseum, second floor. My back door goes out into the ballroom. So walking through it at night, summer or winter, I can sometimes hear the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. But as our new CEO, Matt Wiemet says, and Matt is absolutely right about this, history should be respected, but not revered. We are not Gettysburg National Military Park or Monticello or Plymouth Rock. Cedar Point is an amusement park, a business that must change or die. Too much reverence for the past can also be a roadmap to oblivion. Paddle wheel excursions. I miss paddle wheel excursions just like many of you do. It's been morphed into dinosaurs a lot. What happens at Cedar Point and happens at any business that's continuing to grow and thrive has changed. And it can be very positive. Look at the, uh, many of you have been here during, during Halloween, we have the Dead Ride Cemetery up in front. You know, I smile every time I walk past and I see Frontier Lift, there, my old ride from <laughs> 1969, which went away in 1985. That's part of the, part of Cedar Point is growth and change, and uh, it, has to, it has to take place. So I want to talk a little bit about what's new, how we are changing, and frankly, you know, what's in it for you guys as guests. Well, Dinosaurs Alive on Adventure Island, not something we thought of. Uh, the idea came from Kings Island, as many of you know, I think. Their marketing vice president, Matt Schaefer, saw a dinosaur exhibit at a museum in Cincinnati last winter. I thought it might work at Kings Island as an extra charge attraction. They got together with a company that uh, called Dinosaurs on Earth from Vancouver, uh, Canada. And before they knew it, they had 60 or 70 animatronic dinosaurs on a mile long wooded walkway uh, at Kings Island and it was successful from the jump. And now it's been imported to Cedar Point, Dorney Park, King's Dominion, and Canada's one. I think it will be very successful. Each of us has put a kind of different spin on the attraction. Uh, ours is the only one on an island, so it's minus ours alive on Adventure Island. And we think that will add to the appeal. Our walkway is shorter, and we have fewer dinosaurs, and we have arranged our dinosaurs in a way we think that will create some very, very dramatic scenes. The presentation is great. The sound system is going to blow you away. Uh, it's designed to appeal to families, and I think they'll be very pleased. The foundations are all poured now. Uh, we got the bids in for the walkway uh, just yesterday. Everything looks good. We're going to start pouring the walkway next week. By the end of next week, the dinosaurs themselves arrive uh, uh, toward the end of March. We're going to have a life-size T-Rex outside the main gate. I guarantee you he's going to be popular with you know. Matt Racer at Soak City. It's no, it's no secret Soak City needed some, some, new, some new blood, some new attractions. Last summer we addressed some of the infrastructure by putting in the Toffs ice cream and pizza stand and the subway stand. This year we're adding new product, new slots. The Matt Racer I think is going to be a favorite. You know, you're actually going to get to race your fellow racers down the, down the slide. I think will be really popular. We also reconditioned our main slide complex, painted each of the slides. They go back to 1988, and they've been, you know, the color of these walls ever ever since. And now we've painted them. Many of you, and many of you drive by, did you notice them this morning? Hundred dollar difference. I mean, why didn't we do this years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Fast Lane uh, Freightway, another new product for Cedar Point, but one that was tested at several other Cedar Fair parks last season. 
Guests will have the option of, of purchasing an upgraded ticket. You know, actually, it's a, it's a wristband that will give them access to the ride platform on 18 of our most popular rides, including Millennium Force, Cotswold Dragster, Maverick, uh, Raptor. This is not a walk up the exit pass. Uh, there will still be a wait, you know, a little shorter than if you use the main queue line. We're going to sell a limited number of fast lane wristbands every day. How many, you would ask? I don't know. It's going to, we're going to figure it out as we go along. We have a couple of ideas. Pricing, the price for, uh, for one person will be $50, and we'll drop to as low as $30 if five or more are purchased. You will be able to buy it online and at the park. We're going to have a similar program for our mazes during Halloween weekends, uh, Paul Friday. Cedar Point has made a major commitment to make the park more fully accessible to our special needs guests. We are spending upwards of a million dollars this off-season to improve access to restrooms, food stands, retail stores, restaurants, swimming pools, and rides. And virtually, we're touching every restroom and every food stand and every restaurant in the park. Premium parking, uh, we're going to introduce a premium parking option for our guests this year, something that's been very popular at uh, a lot of our other parks. The area is going to be a portion of the space spiral lot uh, adjacent to the main entrance. This winter we're going to, we worked out a partnership with Best Locker Company to replace all our old lockers with new electronic lockers in, in Cedar Point. And I know this is going to improve guest service on many levels. These lockers use a pin number, not a thumbprint like Universal some others, some others do. But you'll be able to do it with a credit card. It will be very fast and efficient and safe. Uh, if any of you have been to Wildwater Kingdom recently, they have that locker system there. It works very well there. Hello Weekends, uh, as you know, a very successful event for us, which has grown tremendously in the past 14 years. It's no secret, uh, our busiest days of the season now are the Saturdays in October. Uh, Jam-packed. So with the introduction of Dinosaurs Alive, we need to find a new home for Terror Island. It's one of our most you know, successful scare zones and uh, very, very popular. I will tell you it hasn't been easy. We had a meeting, in fact, yesterday afternoon, I think we finally came up with a plan. The hint I'll give you is that it will be in Frontier Town, but no more than that. Uh, but stay tuned for further developments. We're also hoping to retheme one of our existing units as well. Season passes, uh, new this year is the installment plan. Can you can spread the purchase of your season pass uh, on four monthly payments. Uh, we've, we've had over 500 guests take advantage of that uh, just in the last several weeks. It's a very positive addition. Our website has undergone a complete makeover, as I'm sure you all have noticed. Top to bottom, and like any good website, it's a work in progress. It's evolving. It's always changing. Our goal is, to, is simple, to make it more user-friendly and make it so guests can make purchases, uh, make reservations, make plans in advance and do it before they get to the park. Live entertainment, a lot of our live entertainment package changes every year. And 2012 is no exception. But we're going to have an all-new ice show in the Good Time Theater. You know, Happiness is a Snoopy on Ice. The show debuted at Knott's Berry Farm last fall. It was very popular. We're also going to have new shows in the Red Garter uh, and a new show for the Palace Theater. We're adding a new retail shop for our Breakers Express Hotel on Cedar Point Drive. And speaking of Cedar Point Drive, who else besides me is tired of driving over that crappy pavement out there? <laughs> <laughs> the city of Sandusky uh, has finally come through. Uh, they got a federal grant, and uh, they're going to skin the, the top layer of asphalt uh, this spring. And they promised us by uh, opening that they'll be done. And it will be all brand new black top. It will look really nice. Part of the deal is they're also going to be putting in walkways on the east side and a bike path. Really? Which is one of the reasons you're seeing all those trees missing in the Georgia this morning. How many noticed all the trees were gone? Come on, more you guys. That's that's new too. Uh, our new CEO Matt Weemat has initiated a new focus on food quality at all Cedar, Park, Cedar Fair Parks, I think you'll see a difference. At Cedar Point, for example, we're returning to the original recipe for our famous fresh cut fries. Mm -hmm. 
As I mentioned in one of my tweets, <laughs> Blue Streak, Giant Wheel, and Millennium Force will all get new paint this season. <coughs> Big projects, each one of them. Actually, the Millennium Force project spans two seasons because we did start painting last year. You notice some of the, the track got painted. We had to take a break, obviously, during the operating season. We weren't able to do any last fall for a couple of reasons. We're going to do a lot this spring. And then we probably won't be able to finish it until this fall. But it's a big roller coaster. <laughs> it's hard to get at some of those spots. It's a very, very big, expensive, uh, multi-year project, which you don't, fortunately we don't have to do every year. But the Millennium Force has not been painted since it was opened in 2000, so we've got a, we've got a good run out of the existing paint shop. Blue Street needs, a, 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 uh, needs new paint as well, and Giant Wheel, of course. Giant Wheel is going to get a whole new light system. Woo! It's going to look fantastic. And luminosity. Uh, Leo Lexico is going to talk to you about luminosity in a few minutes, so I'm not going to steal any of her thunder. But she has a lot of thunder. <laughs> it's, it's a great story. Guest satisfaction at Cedar Point. Or, you know, or any amusement park for that matter, is largely determined by what the Funny experience. How many rides you ride? Right? Ah, right. And which ones? <laughs> Certainly. Okay, right. This year we're adding two new ride mechanics to our staff. Oh, okay. And two new electrical controls technicians, which is going to help downtime, which mm -hmm. is going to help our ride performance. And it's part, part of our commitment to guest service. We do take that very, very seriously. The first thing I do in the morning in the summertime, I get up, I go to my computer at home, I log on, I log on to Cedar Point, I look at a document that shows what the ride downtime was for every, all the major rides at Cedar Point the day before. And I'm looking, I'm calculating, and wondering why this went up or this went down, and I, I make phone calls right away. We put in a software system last year <coughs> called Ride Management, where on my computer desk, on a screen on my computer at, at my office and a lot of other offices in the park, we can look at every ride in the park and know whether it's up or whether it's down, if it's down, what the problem is and how long it's been down. You need to stay on top of it. It's, it's the number one driver of guest satisfaction. Yeah. How many rides you have, how long you have to wait, which rides you ride. So it's, we're serious about that. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I, I'm a Point Buzz fan. I, I visit the site often. I, I read what you have to say about the park. <clears throat> a lot of other people at Cedar Point do too. I'm always amazed at the affection uh, we have for the park. <clears throat> Your suggestions and ideas for improving it and making it better uh, come right from the heart. I know that. Some of them are not always practical. <laughs> we haven't figured out yet how to build that 500-foot roller coaster. <laughs> that also goes under Lake Erie. <laughs> I'm also amazed at how much you know about the park. Uh, you notice the little things. Little things are important. Little things become big things. So when you're at the park, you see me on the midway, please stop and say hello. Uh, walking the midway, talking to guests, talking to employees. Best part of my job, period, is what they pay me to do. It's the only way to really know what's going on. Truly. If there's something you like, please, don't hold back, tell me. If there's something you don't like, absolutely tell me. During the season, I'm here every day. Uh, Tuesday, hopefully the exception when I can. Uh, and I'd love to talk to you. Or, or email me. Jay Hildebrandt at cedarpoint.com. I will tell you, I get a lot of emails. I may not be able to respond in person. I will certainly forward it to somebody who can respond to whatever issue you have or comments you have. So again, thanks for coming today. I hope you had a good time. And uh, I'll see you on the Midwest. <laughs> any questions? Probably almost any questions. Anybody have any questions? Oh, come on. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Is the lighting system on Giant Wheel going to be LED? Yes, it will be. Is there any plans for dark rides in the future? I hope so. You know, we're, we're always talking about that. Uh, I'm a big dark ride fan. I think 
Every great amusement park needs to have a dark ride, you know, it needs to have carousel, it needs to have a dodge, it needs to have wooden roller coasters, it needs to be down, down the list. If you're starting from scratch and building one, you certainly want one. Uh, through a variety of circumstances, we haven't been able to do it, other things have taken priority, but it's certainly on the active list of, of future considerations. If they're rain or shine, they're family, yet, you know, teenagers can have fun with them, you can make them interactive, uh, all good stuff. Earlier you was talking about the uh, right pass uh, armband. Mm -hmm. Is that going to replace the uh, arm stamps, hand stamps that you give out? Or? We haven't actually haven't done that in a number of years, sir. Okay. But uh, so it's really different than that. We will still have uh, we still have a VIP program. I mentioned some of you may be aware of that. Uh, that's a very special escorted service for groups up to six people who want be escorted around the park. Uh, those folks do go up the exit. It's, uh, I think, three, seven, 375 bucks a person. And uh, we sell, actually sell a number of them, but at any given day, it's, it's impact on the park is that, you know, really good price. So. But if you really want to treat somebody, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? What's your favorite ride? Favorite ride. Well, I love all my children, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'd probably say Millennium Force. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, you know, I've ridden a lot of roller coasters. You know, that's the best combination of everything. There's not a time I've ever ridden it where you just don't get off, get up and say, wow. <laughs> it's, it's so exciting. It's, it's so speed driven. It's, it's not... I, I remember thinking when we were doing uh, Terror Island, you know, and we were putting all these props and stuff out there on the island, and people, we were all worried about, it. well, you know, it's going to look kind of junky and different and everything for people riding a ride. But you know, you're going so freaking fast. You know? <laughs> 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 it's all whoosh, you know? so that that's a great one. I mean, Top Thrill is fantastic too. I mean, the launch and that's a one of a kind experience. Uh, Watching people, you know, I spent a lot of time on the deck there watching people, and, and uh, people are certainly more nervous about that launch and about riding that ride than any other ride. You, you just have never see, you don't see that anyplace else. I mean, you watch those people, you know, they're done. <laughs> <laughs> and that, it used to be, you know, in 03, 04, 05, or 06, you had more people that were first timers, you know, and some were just petrified. And just nice to tease them when I'd stand on the platform. They'd say, well, how many times have you ridden? I'd say, I don't know, 38, 39. Oh, no, it's impossible. <laughs> but that's a great ride. But, but, you know, I like the sky ride. You know, that, that's, there aren't many of those left in the, in the business, actually. And we have one of the few. And it's, it's a great, great family ride. It's a beautiful view at night. The lights, the lake, the bay. I mean, it's great. It's great. Blue Streak is still a great ride. You know, great traditional coaster. So, yeah, they're all, kids are all great. <laughs> yes, sir. You've been uh, doing higher than average amount of work to Mean Street the last two lots. Yes. And, and I call it made a huge difference last year. Thank you. I'm curious, is, is this the last year, or are you going to be continuing that, shutting it down during Halloween? Uh, we're not sure about whether we'll shut it down Halloween this year or not. Uh, it depends on how much work we get done this spring. What we think we need to have, how much time we think we need between the end of this season and the start of next season. And we're always trying to calculate that. And with Mean Street, you can't work usually December, January, February. You know, our, our carpenters uh, are great, highly skilled. Uh, when you get up on that structure when there's ice and snow and you know, winds like today, it's, you get very inefficient and it's just not safe. So you're really limited to what you can do you know, before Thanksgiving in the, in the spring. And uh, big wooden, co wooden roller coasters are enormous maintenance uh, efforts. They just are. Uh, no two ways about it. And that's why you don't see big ones built anymore. And you won't in the future. But, the, you know, the wooden roller coaster is now the 100 to 125 footer. And they've made dramatic improvements. In you know, you got to you got to invest the time. There's no, no two ways about it. Just, you know, to, to check the mean streak every morning, it's over an hour. Because we walk the track every day. Two carpenters walk from front to, front to back.
Anything else? Well, again, thanks, guys. And